Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're gonna to do a more comprehensive review of MX Linux. So MX Linux is based on Debian. It does not have System D, or at least has the option to not have System D. And it is really one of those good operating systems for a lightweight computer system. And uh, today we're actually gonna do a more comprehensive review because I actually took my writing computer and I replaced the operating system, which was Peppermint, with MX Linux. Now, of course, I write, and my science fiction novel, Synaptergy, is available. So if you're interested in science fiction, and uh, you can have a look at the link in the description down below, head on over to the website, and I have a variety of links where you can find that in print book, ebook, and audiobook form. But I write all those books on this little Lenovo computer. This is a Lenovo S21e. So before we get into the review, let's tell you a little bit about the specs of this. Super lightweight, bought it for about 100 bucks about four years ago. It's been an excellent computer, still runs great. We have an Intel Cellular on CPU N2840, uh, which is a dual core CPU, and uh, it runs at uh, 2.16 gigahertz. There's two gigs of RAM, it is soldered in, so there's not much you can do about it. This guy is running Debian, of course, now is what my system there is telling me on my profiles. Screen resolution is 1366 by 768 using basic uh, OpenGL renderer, uh, Mesa DRI Intel by Bay Trail. And uh, other than that, it is uh, it is a, a lot lower spec, so it has your more uh, proprietary and harder to work with mouse pads. I remember when I first installed Peppermint, I had to install the drivers for the mouse pad. I had to install the drivers for the Broadcom uh, chip in there as well. So those were some of the issues that I originally had. Of course, those got easily resolved and uh, no big deal from there. So why did I replace Peppermint? Well, the Peppermint version I had on there was version seven, I think, from almost four years ago. It had another year of support, but the current Peppermint team is going through some transitionary periods and it caused some of the repos to kind of become unstable. I ran an update and I received some instabilities. I fought with it to try and fix the system a little bit, but it didn't quite get fixed as well as I would have liked it to. So I just went ahead and said, you know what? I've th been thinking about wiping this anyway because actually half of that computer was running Windows 10. Yes, that was one of the computers I had that did run Windows 10, which I hadn't booted into, I think, since 2017. So it was time to kill it. And so wiping it out and installing MX Linux was a good option. I needed something lightweight. My favorite Linux Mint Cinnamon is not going to work with a system with these computer specs. So I always like to do some type of XFCE. That means we're looking at Linux Lite, we're looking at Peppermint, we're looking at MX Linux, or I could have done Linux Mint XFCE, but I wanted to give one of the other distributions a try, and I wanted to go with something based more on Debian rather than based more on Ubuntu, and that meant MX Linux. So as far as the installer, the installer on MX Linux is excellent. It has so many options inside of it where you can choose your user groups, you can choose even how your clock is formatted. That's something Linux Mint hasn't figured out how to do. You always start up in a Linux Mint with a 24 hour clock. MX has the toggle up button. You wanna do it on or off. You do have the option to enable encryption. However, I tried installing this several times with encryption. It will not install on this computer with encryption, best I can tell. Now, if I remember correctly, the gentleman who runs um, MX Linux might have this computer or it's the guy on, on uh, Linux Lite. I forget which one of those two does run this computer. So presumably it might work. I was not able to get it to work. I think that the reason is the hardware configuration, the hard drive does not actually show up as a hard drive, it shows up as an SD card. And I think that that is tripping the installer in some way. I tried a variety of different ways, I could not get it installed. And since this is exclusively for writing, if everything on this computer is eventually going to be public, I said, you know what? I'm not gonna fight with it, I'm just gonna go ahead and install it unencrypted. No big deal. And so, sad, but I don't store any passwords, I don't store any user accounts, I don't store any personal information. There's nothing on it except my books and the software I need to make that happen. So for me, I would have liked to have the encrypted form, but it's not a deal breaker for me, not a big deal. Once we got it installed, I did have a problem with bloat. It reminded me of the old Windows days. I boot up the computer, it took me over a half an hour to remove all the software that I didn't want. Now, some of it was software many of you wanted to keep on, like Conky, 
I don't care for Conky. I just didn't want it installed. So I uninstalled all of that. I uninstalled, they gave you a plethora of video games. It's a writing computer. I don't need video games. I uninstalled that. I uninstalled, I can't remember all of the software I uninstalled, but it was a lot. I got myself down to your basics. We had LibreOffice on there. I put um, Sigil. I put um, Bible Time since I do Christian writing. Uh, I put the, the Bible Time and the Zyphos software on there. And I'm going to do a better review of those software packages sometime soon. All right. Um, I also installed Calibri. That might be it. The other thing that I did, now most of the software, most of the software is actually fairly up to date. Bible Time was the 2.11, which is right now the current release, and it works perfectly. In fact, it works better here than it does on my Linux Mint system uh, that I use it for on, on other places. Firefox, one of the things that they do is rather than Firefox ESR, which Debian usually does, they've given you the port for the up-to-date, modern, regular Firefox, not the ESR. LibreOffice, though, was old. That was back to version 6.1. However, it's very easy to install the latest version of LibreOffice on Debian by enabling the contributor repositories, which I went ahead and did that. I installed the backports so that I can have the latest version of LibreOffice. That's important because the language tool plugin to give you a grammar checker in LibreOffice, and I have a video about that, is only available in LibreOffice 6.2 or later. So I am running LibreOffice 6.4. Everything else is the same versions they gave us from inside the repositories. Now, I did want to hold back Firefox from updating because the current URL bar, the big balky thing that gives you all that, it fills my heart with loathing and hatred, and so I hate it. So I actually held that version of Firefox back. That posed me a little problem. In MX Linux does have an excellent updater that tells you software's ready to update, but there's no way to go in that I could find or I could exclude a package. And so every time I boot up the computer, you have an update, and it's Firefox. So I actually disabled the MX updater. I didn't remove it entirely. I just disabled it from starting up on startup so it doesn't give me the pop-up and I use Synaptic or apt to, uh, to uh, do my updates and I just hold that one Firefox package back until there is some confirmed major security vulnerability that forces me to go up or I figure out a better solution to fix the URL bar in modern Firefox. That's kind of my software wrap up. Let's talk about drivers. As I said, when I first installed Peppermint on this particular computer, I had to fight with the Broadcom wireless card and I had to fight with the mousepad drivers. Now, that's easy in Peppermint because Peppermint, based on Ubuntu, has the driver utility so I could, as long as I could just get it onto an internet connection, which I was able to do with a USB dongle, I can run the driver tool and it found and installed the drivers for the touchpad and for the wireless card. No problems. MX Linux? They worked out of the box. Shocking, I know. Now I know, four years later, you would hope some of those drivers are, are in the Linux kernel now, and they indeed are. Uh, by the way, Linux kernel, I think is 419, if I remember. I might be wrong about that, um, but I think that's what it is. Now, other drivers, MX Linux is the first ever Linux distribution that my stupid printer the HL2380DW prints out of the box. No driver installation necessary. The scanner doesn't work, but the scanner on that thing is like nightmare fuel for Linux users. They do have a dev package. If I used the scanner with this computer, I would install the drivers from the dev packages and I have every bit of confidence it would work. But since this computer never uses a scanner, all I need is the printing. The printing worked out of the box. I am thoroughly impressed with the driver support in MX Linux in my experience with this little laptop. Settings have changed. Well, first and foremost, MX Linux is one of those distributions that clicks with a single click to open in Thunar. I'm not really into that. Every other computer I use is double click, so I did not want to have to get that used to that. So easy, go into the Thunar, change the settings, switch that back to double click. I did want to originally try the panel on the side like MX Linux ships with the panel on the left side of the screen, but in all honesty, that, that kind of, it got in my way, it interferes with my workflow, 
and my system just wasn't working at the same efficiency I usually do. So I did actually move the panel down to the bottom and set it up in the more traditional way where I have my listing of open applications at the bottom. I have my menu up there. Very easy to change, very simple. But once I did that, the whole system is just absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. Um, let's see, I did talk about the holding back packages. Um, my overall user experience, I've been running this now for two weeks. It runs so far beautifully. I have actually already had more little issues with it than I have ever had in Peppermint. Peppermint in four years, I've had one, exactly one kernel panic and system freeze. Now, MX Linux, I have not had anything that severe, but there are a couple issues. Number one, I actually had the boot system lag out on me once and get frozen. Uh, that was a single time. Uh, not sure, maybe some weird, you know, the phase of the moon was right or whatever else. But in the dozen tons of times that I turned it on, I've only experienced that once. I do not think that that's going to be a long-term or persistent problem. Number two is this happened several times is Thunar seems to freeze on me a lot. If I have, like, I open up my, my file on my desktop with my writing document, I open up LibreOffice, I sit there and do my typey typeys for about an hour or so, close everything down, go to close down Thunar, and it freezes. I actually have to go in and kill the process to get it back. In some cases, I had to reboot in order to get Thunar working back again. Those are the only issues I've experienced so far. Not sure if they're going to be long-term. I think I've experienced that two or three times. As for the battery life, the battery life does get a significantly more battery life than did Peppermint. We're talking about 30% more battery life. I've only charged this guy twice in two weeks. Peppermint, I'd usually have to charge it midway through the week. So my writing schedule, I write for about an hour in the morning and I'll have the computer on. It's gonna be running, it's gonna be doing things about halfway through the week. So approximately four and a half hours is what I got on Peppermint 7. With MX Linux, I'm actually getting about six and a half hours of regular use on the battery, an increase of about 30% of battery efficiency. The only other little tiny minuscule bug is it does not automatically connect to hidden networks. My network at my home network here is a hidden SSID. It will not connect to hidden networks automatically. That to me is not a deal breaker because this is a computer that I overwhelmingly do not use at home. I use it out and about. So usually I'm in a park, no network anywhere. It does connect when I open up my hotspot on my phone to connect to the internet to do a backup. It connects to that automatically because that's not a hidden network. So it does work with non-hidden networks. It's just my hidden network. I have to go in and manually connect it. So there is my overall take on MX Linux. After using it for about two weeks so far, I would highly recommend it. It gives you that Debian base. However, a lot of the software is up to date. They give us a lot more, more tools, a lot more things in their repository to use some of the more common applications. If I remember, and um, uh, don't quote me exactly because I don't use any of these programs, I believe Spotify is in the repos because they have their own separate MX Linux easy to install store. They've got things like uh, Skype, they have Steam in there. A lot of different things that a regular normal computer user might want to use. I don't personally, but it's awesome that they are available for the install. My overall experience has been highly positive. I really think you should take a look at MX Linux, particularly if you have a lower end, lightweight computer with very low system specs. Because like I said, this guy here, $100 is what I paid for this five, four, four years ago. I think it's four years ago. It has been a very good writing computer. The keyboard's not super compact, but it's not super large. I'm getting on MX Linux about six and a half hours of battery life. Uh, running a dark theme, so I'm running a nice dark theme on that, you can see. And uh, it overall works excellent. I highly recommend this distribution for your lightweight computer systems. So with that, thanks for coming along on this video. I would like to thank the sponsors of the video, so all of my Patreon and Think Life Media supporters. Uh, those guys at uh, $10 up or more are going to be on the final end screen there, and we have about a dozen or two on the $5 supporters. You can find more information on supporting there at patreon.com forward slash T-O-M-M or thinklifemedia.com. Thanks for coming along and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.